Today, we are faced, I think, with the approach of what may be called the ultimate revolution, the final revolution, where a man can act directly on uh, the mind body of his fellows. Well, needless to say, some kind of direct action on human mind bodies has been going on since the beginning of time. Uh, but this has generally been uh, of a violent nature. The techniques of terrorism have been known from time immemorial, and uh, w people have employed them with more or less uh, ingenuity, sometimes with uh, the utmost crudity, sometimes with a, a good deal of skill inquire, uh, acquired uh, by a process of trial and error, finding out what the best ways of using torture, imprisonment, uh, constraints of various kinds. But uh, as um, I think it was Metternich said uh, many years ago, uh, you can do everything with bayonets except sit on them. That if you are going to control any population for any length of time, you must have some measure of consent. It's exceedingly difficult to see uh, how pure terrorism can function indefinitely. It can function for a fairly long time, but I think uh, sooner or later you have to bring in an element of persuasion, an element of getting people to consent to what is happening to them. Well, it seems to me that the, the nature of the ultimate revolution with which we are now faced is precisely this, uh, that we are in process of developing a whole series of techniques which uh, will enable the controlling oligarchy who have always existed and presumably always will exist uh, to get people actually to love their servitude. Uh, th this is the, seems to me the, the ultimate uh, in malevolent revolution, shall we say. And that there seems to be a general movement in the direction of this kind of ultimate revolution, this, this method of control by which people can be made to enjoy a state of affairs which, by any decent standard, they ought not to enjoy. Uh, this, I mean, the enjoyment of, uh, of servitude. And first, uh, let me talk about uh, a little bit about the improvement even in the techniques of, of terrorism. Uh, I think there, there have been improvements. Uh, Pavlov, after all, made some extremely profound observations, both on animals and on human beings. And he found, uh, among other things, that uh, conditioning uh, techniques applied to animals or humans in a state either of psychological or of physical stress sank in, so to say, very deeply into the mind-body of the creature and were extremely difficult to get rid of, that they seem to be embedded more deeply than, than other forms of conditioning. In this context, I would uh, uh, like to mention the um, extremely interesting chapters in uh, Dr. William Sargent's uh, Battle for the Mind, where he uh, points out how intuitively uh, some of the great uh, religious uh, uh, teachers, leaders of the past, uh, hit on the Pavlovian method. He, he speaks specifically of Wesley's method of producing conversions, uh, which were essentially based upon a, a technique of, of heightening psychological stress to the limit by talking about hellfire, and so making people extremely vulnerable to suggestion, and then suddenly releasing this stress by offering the hopes of heaven. And uh, this is a very interesting chapter of showing how uh, how completely, on, a, on purely intuitive and empirical grounds, a, a skilled natural psychologist, as Wesley was, uh, could discover these uh, Pavlovian uh, methods. Well, as I say, we now know the reason why these techniques worked, and uh, there is no doubt at all that we can, if we want to, uh, carry them much further uh, than was possible in the past. And, of course, in the uh, history of uh, recent history of, of brainwashing, both as applied to prisoners of war and to the lower personnel within the Communist Party in China, uh, we see that the Pavlovian methods have been applied systematically and with, 
with uh, evidently with extraordinary efficacy. I mean, I think there can be no doubt that uh, by the application of these methods, a very large army of totally devoted people uh, has been created. Uh, the, the conditioning has been driven in, so to say, uh, by kind of psychological iontophoresis uh, into the very depth of the people's being and has got so deep that it's very difficult for it ever to be rooted out. And uh, these uh, methods, I, I think, are a real refinement on the older methods of terror because they combine methods of terror with methods uh, of uh, acceptance, method that the, the person who he is subjected to a form of, of terroristic stress, uh, but uh, for the purpose of inducing a kind of voluntary, quotes, um, acceptance of uh, the state, and, uh, the psychological state into which he has been driven and the state of affairs within which he finds himself. So that, as I say, there has been, I think, a, a definite improvement, shall we say, uh, in the, even in the techniques of, of terrorism. Well, then we come to um, the consideration of other techniques, of, of non-terroristic techniques for uh, inducing consent and for uh, inducing people to love their servitude. Uh, first of all, there are the methods connected with uh, straight suggestion and, uh, and hypnosis. I think we know much more about this subject than was, was known in the past. People, of course, have always known about suggestion, and although they didn't know the word hypnosis, uh, they certainly practiced it. But we now, I think, uh, know pretty clearly the, the sort of statistical structure of a population in regard to its, uh, to its uh, suggestibility. Uh, it's very interesting uh, when you look at the, the findings in different fields. I mean, in the field of hypnosis, in the field of... Uh, administering placebos, for example, uh, in the field of general uh, suggestion uh, in states of drowsiness or of light sleep, you will find the same sorts of orders of magnitude continually cropping up. Uh, you will find, for example, that the um, experienced uh, hypnotists uh, will tell one uh, that the number of people, the percentage of people who can be hypnotized with the utmost facility, just like that, uh, is about 20, 20%. That about uh, a corresponding number at the other end of the scale are, are very, very difficult or almost impossible to hypnotize. And that in between there lies a large mass of people who can, with more or less difficulty, uh, be hypnotized. That, that uh, they can gradually be, if you work hard enough at it, be, be got into the hypnotic state. And in, in the same way, one... Uh, uh, the same sort of figures crop up again, for example, in relation to the administration of placebos. A, a big experiment was carried out three or four years ago in the um, General Hospital in Boston on post-operative cases where several hundred men and women suffering comparable kinds of pain after serious operations were given injections whenever they asked for them whenever the pain got bad, and the injections 50% uh, of the time were of morphia and 50% of the time were of distilled water. And about 20% of, of those uh, who went through the experiment, about 20% of them got just as much relief from the distilled water as from the mo morphia. About 20% got no relief from the distilled water, and in between were those who got some relief or got relief uh, occasionally. So here again we see the same sort of, uh, of distribution and I suspect also that it would not be at all difficult uh, to recognize in very early childhood who were the, those who were extremely suggestible, who were those who were extremely unsuggestible, and who were those who occupied the intermediate space. Quite clearly, if everybody were extremely unsuggestible, um, organized society would be quite impossible. Uh, and if everybody were extremely uh, suggestible, then um, uh, dictatorship would be absolutely inevitable. I mean, it's very fortunate we have people who are moderately suggestible in the majority and who therefore preserve us from dictatorship but do permit uh, uh, organized society to, uh, to be formed. Uh, 
But once given the fact that there are these 20% of highly suggestible people, it becomes quite clear that this is a matter of enormous political importance. Uh, for example, uh, any demagogue who is able to get hold of a, a large number of these 20% of suggestible people and to organize them is really in a position to overthrow any government uh, in any country. And I mean, I, I think this, uh, uh, after all, we've had the most incredible uh, example in recent years of what can be done by efficient methods of, uh, of uh, suggestion and persuasion uh, in the form of Hitler. Uh, anybody who's uh, read, for example, Bullock's Life of Hitler uh, comes forth from this with a, a sort of horrified admiration for this infernal genius who, who really understood human weaknesses, I think, almost better than anybody, and who uh, exploited them with all the resources then available I mean, he knew everything. I mean, for example, he knew intuitively uh, this uh, Pavlovian truth that uh, uh, conditioning installed in a state of stress or fatigue uh, it goes much deeper than conditioning installed at other times. This was why all his big speeches were organized at night. He speaks of this quite frankly, of course, in Mein Kampf. He says this was done solely because people are tired at night and therefore are much less... Uh, capable of resisting persuasion than they would be during the day. And uh, we see in all his uh, techniques, he, he was using, uh, he, he had discovered intuitively and by uh, uh, trial and error a great many of the, of the weaknesses which we now know about on a, in a sort of scientific way, I think much more clearly than he does, uh, than he did. Uh, but uh, the fact remains that uh, this differential suggestibility, uh, uh, this uh, susceptibility to uh, hypnosis, I do think uh, has, is something which has to be considered very uh, carefully in relation to any uh, kind of thought about uh, um, democratic uh, government. I mean, if there are 20% of the people who can really be suggested into believing almost anything, as evidently they can be, uh, then we have to take uh, extremely uh, careful steps to prevent the uh, rise of demagogues who will uh, drive them on into uh, extreme positions and then organize them into very, very dangerous uh, uh, armies, private armies, which may overthrow the, overthrow the government. Well, uh, this, as I say, is, is uh, 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 in this field of, of pure persuasion. I think we, uh, we do know much more than we did in the past, and obviously we now have uh, uh, mechanisms for multiplying the demagogue's voice and image uh, in a quite hallucinatory way. I mean, the television and the radio, uh, Hitler was making enormous use of the radio. He could speak to millions of people simultaneously, uh, I mean, this, this alone, of course, is, uh, creates an enormous gulf between the modern and the ancient demagogue. And the ancient demagogue could only uh, appeal to as many people as his voice could reach by the yelling at, the, um, at his utmost, but uh, the modern demagogue can touch literally millions at a time. And, and of course, with his, the multiplication of his image, he can produce this kind of a hallucinatory effect which uh, uh, is of, of enormous uh, uh, hypnotic and uh, suggest, uh, suggestive importance. In these uh, techniques which uh, where the object of application uh, is the human being uh, you're obviously up against uh, the, the most uh, dangerous situation and, and what will be the temptation uh, for those in power. I mean, after all, uh, we pray regularly not to be led into temptation, and this is a very profound and important prayer. I mean, uh, uh, experience sadly shows that if we are tempted long enough and strongly enough, we almost invariably succumb, and that the, the whole uh, process of uh, setting up a decent society is essentially setting up a society in which temptations to abuse power and uh, shall be reduced to a minimum. Uh, but uh, 
these uh, new techniques, I, I think, do uh, constitute a series of uh, very powerful uh, temptations uh, which to those in authority may be t finally turn out to be irresistible. I hope not, but uh, I think what you say is, uh, uh, is something which we have to think about. I mean, that uh, this might uh, be uh, applied with justification, as you say, in the highest patriotic and moral terms, uh, even in uh, democratic societies. I trust not, but... Uh, but one never knows.